let's start our next stop and jot. Don't forget to grab your Module 6 handout. At the very beginning of this lesson, we reviewed two keywords strongly connected to this lesson, phonemes and graphemes. Phonemes are the smallest unit of sound, and graphemes are letters. But the important idea is that words are made up of phonemes represented by graphemes. This correspondence sounds simple, but the fact is that there are only 44 phonemes in our language. But those 44 phonemes can be represented by about 250 different graphemes and grapheme combinations. We then embarked on a journey related to sound production and the fact that it is all about how the airflow moves from our lungs out of our mouth or nose. We started this journey with the production of consonant sounds and defined a consonant as a speech sound created by a partial obstruction of the airflow. We then talked about the manner of articulation, which is how the airflow is affected during the release of air, and learned that there are six manners of articulation, stops, where the sound stops as soon as the air is released, fricatives, which is where the air is channeled through a narrow opening. But these sounds can be held for as long as you have air. A fricatives, where the air is briefly stopped in the mouth and then released slowly. Nasals, where the air is pushed through the nose. Glides, which have very little obstruction of air, so the sound is almost like a vowel. And liquids, where the sound is made with very little air, that again creates a vowel-like sound. While we talked about this, we spent a little time letting you make the sound so you could feel the air as it made its way from your lungs to your mouth and out. It is important that kids can feel the sounds in their mouths as this helps to concrete the abstractness of just hearing the sound produced. In addition to helping children realize how sounds are produced in our mouths, it is important to pronunciation that they also know the placement of articulation. Where in the mouth does the air engage? The lips, teeth, roof of the mouth. And what is the tongue doing to help direct the flow of air? You completed the consonant chart by using your mirrors to see how your mouth was shaped and to help you see the placement of your lips, teeth, and tongue. And if all of this watching and feeling was not enough, we talked about consonant pairs and how that made it even more difficult because some consonant sounds are produced in the same manner and place of articulation. So you really have to pay attention to determine which are voiced, engagement of the vocal cords, and which are unvoiced, no engagement of the vocal cords. Using articulatory gestures such as visual graphics and mirrors can really aid you as the teacher in helping students understand and know how to get their mouths ready to articulate consonant sounds correctly. We then turned our attention to the production of vowel sounds, speech sounds that are created or produced with no obstruction of air. We said there were basically five vowel letters but 19 vowel sounds, and all of these sounds are open voice sounds because there is no obstruction of air. It is easier to feel the vibration from the vocal cords being engaged when pronouncing vowel sounds. You engaged in a fun activity using the vowel valley chart to help you see how the sound difference in the vowels based on placement of the mouth goes from slightly opened to wide opened and reversed. The manner is open, but it is the placement of the mouth that makes the difference in vowels. And the last big idea discussed in our study of vowel sound production was the six basic vowel patterns. The CVC pattern is a very common pattern, especially in words encountered in the lower elementary grades. The vowel is generally squished in the middle of two consonants, creating a short vowel sound. The open or CV pattern is where the vowel is at the end of the word, so it is free to be itself, meaning it is spelled as a long sound, so it is free to say its name. The silent or final E pattern, known as CVC E pattern, is also a very common pattern where there are two vowels in a single syllable word, and one 
precedes the last consonant in the word, which is followed by the vowel E. In this case, the first vowel spells its long sound, and the final E is silent. Then, there is the CVVC pattern, which has two major parts, the vowel digraphs, which are two vowels together, but only one, the first, has a sound, which is the long sound, and the other is silent. The other CVVC pattern is comprised of vowel diphthongs, which again have two vowels side by side, but together they produce a gliding sound where the mouth begins at one position and then slides into another as the sound is uttered. The fifth vowel pattern is the R-controlled pattern where the vowel is followed by the letter R, which kind of takes over the vowel sound as the sound it makes affects the airflow. At the primary level, we generally deal with the basic three R-controlled vowels, or R, R. And the last vowel pattern, which generally is taught later in the progression around third grade, depending on the program being used, is the C plus L E pattern. This pattern only occurs in two syllable words when working with kindergarten through third grade students. At this point, the first syllable will contain one of the other five patterns. The important thing to remember about vowel patterns is that it is important that we teach students to look at the vowels and where they are placed before decoding as the placement will help them in that process. We should teach kids when they see an unknown word to look at it and ask themselves three questions to help them determine what sound to give each vowel in the word. How many vowels are in the word? What are they? and where are they located in the word. Sound walls help concrete the phonemes we teach our students. It is a visual reminder of what has been learned, as well as what will be learned. There are four main goals of sound wall instruction. The first goal is that it allows students to attend to the articulation of phonemes. Articulatory gestures for each phoneme are placed on the sound wall and taught in the classroom to help make the phonemes concrete. The second goal is that students are afforded the opportunity to attend to graphemes representing the phonemes. The graphemes are not revealed all at once. They are disclosed over time as they are explicitly taught. The third goal of sound wall instruction is to help students attend to the sound spelling connection. The sound spelling system is a precursor to the skills of decoding, blending, and encoding, segmenting. As we know, decoding and encoding lead to comprehension and composition. So sound wall instruction helps our students build foundational skills they will be using for the rest of their life. The fourth goal of sound wall instruction is for our students to build their orthographic maps. These maps get stored in students' brains as they master the sound spelling system. And all of this helps lead to fluency in reading. There were only four key concepts to review in this stop and jot, but they were loaded. Lots of information critical for helping our students articulate their sounds correctly.